Hey everybody, it's Jim here. Today we're going to be talking about vibrato and some tips that you can be using regardless of what kind of guitar you have so long as it is equipped with some sort of vibrato unit on it to get the most out of it and to make things perhaps a little bit more musical than just hammering away on the thing and that definitely has a time and a place for it however there are a few food for thought things that I thought I might pass along to you guys and maybe you might find them useful. Now I understand if what I'm about to say comes off as a little too zen-like for some people, but I really do believe it's true. The first key to really mastering the vibrato is fully understanding and developing the muscle memory for where and how hard you have to press down on the arm or pull up if you're going in the other direction to achieve the notes that you want to go for. You're not just aimlessly pushing down or aimlessly pushing up. So the exercise that we're going to be using here is really straightforward, but it's really really obvious if you're getting it right or not I'm gonna be playing a G sharp major on only one string of the guitar the E string we're gonna loop it with the looper and then we're gonna try and play back starting on the A and we're gonna bend down to it and that'll give me an idea of how much tension is needed Not bad. We kind of let go a little bit there because I was actually going back to pitch. We're starting to play again. However, you get the idea. That's going to give you a really good baseline of how hard you got to push down for a half step. Now, this next one is all about altering the pitch in the other direction. So, you actually want to raise it. For this example, I'm going to be playing a C sharp on the G string, and then I'm going to be bending it upwards a half step to try and get to a D. Now this is all really important stuff because it's going to be able to keep you in the sway zone where you're not going so far out of pitch that when you return back it doesn't sound foreign. So I definitely think it is worth your time to invest the practice into developing the muscle memory as well as kind of training your ears along the way so that you do land closer to whatever semitone you're trying to get to and to keep things as musical as possible. All right, so with those two kind of ear slash arm training things out of the way here, there are two other techniques that I'd like to show you. The first is gonna be the real slow bend into a raise up. You've heard it on tons of classic songs. If you heard me play guitar, I use it from time to time depending on the kind of demo that I'm shooting or the songs that I'm working on. It's basically just something like Now the key to this is to use a good amount of pressure, but maintain it and then very gradually release the arm itself while you are picking and that is what creates that effect. And the final idea I'm gonna leave you guys with here is an exercise that you can put right into songs, either being the main actual part of a track itself during that segment of it, or as a secondary part if you'd like to add in layers. Now, full transparency, if you wanna make the absolute most out of this exercise, you should be doing it to a metronome or a click track. However, our goal is to replace a pedal or the actual vibrato slash tremolo that comes in an amplifier via the actual bar we have on our guitars.
So that's also a really cool exercise because it kind of gives you that natural vibrato slash tremolo that you might associate with a pedal or a tube driven amplifier that has that equipped in it along with a spring reverb and guitars like this and sounds like that are super cool and when you can get away with not dancing so much or even just doing it manually kind of provides more of a human feeling to it and that's what makes it interesting it doesn't sound pitch perfect every single time maybe not but it adds a little bit of life to the effect now all the techniques that we went over in today's video can absolutely be learned, can absolutely be implemented no matter what your style of music is. You don't need to be flying and using dive bombs and doing all sorts of stuff or playing really aggressive surf to add in a little bit of subtle bar movement and add a lot of character to your compositions. Before we get going, I'd just like to say thank you for watching this video. If you found this helpful, let me know in the comments down below or any other topics that you'd like to go over in the future but that being said we're gonna end with a brief little piece of music that has a lot of these techniques that we talked about today inside of it with the addition of one last bonus one when I was talking about using the bar to bend upwards there's a cool trick you can do it also works downward I just feel like it works a little bit better when you're bending up to pitch so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend up and then we're going to flutter <laughs> something like that. But thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video and let me know how you're doing in the comments down below. Take it easy, everybody.